We will start with phase two of our painting. Uh, what I need to have this time, I need to have additional paint, so it's not just black, but also white. And this color is called titanium white. It's coming in acrylics and in oils. I will be using, for this particular painting, oils. I so have here I have ivory black. In case of acrylics, you can use ivory black or Mars black. For oils, I will be using medium, which I have here. Could be a simply linseed oil, walnut oil, or a liquid. Anything what is good to move the oil paints on the surface of the canvas. In case of acrylics, you will just need water. And I also have a solvent that's again in case of my oils some brushes, even one palette knife, and I'm ready to start. So I'm dipping my brush in the container with my medium, and I like to use smaller containers so that I don't contaminate a big amount of medium in the bottle. And then I will be thinking about working first on the backdrop, which will be in the upper part of my painting and the stand. I, I'm doing it on purpose uh, because I don't want to work on small objects. There will be too much of the white space left. I'm looking for the big brush and it seems to me that this one is quite small. So I will be moving to this filbert shaped brush. Medium. If you find out that the medium is a little bit too heavy, you can add a little bit of the solvent, couple of drops in it to make it more liquid, I call it. So I'm taking my white, little bit of black because I have to adjust the tone of the backdrop. Since I'm a right-handed person, I start working from the left side, moving towards the right. The reason for it is that I could easily smash the paint with my working arm. So that's why this would be probably a better solution. Okay, so I'm very fast trying to apply the paint. And from the start, I'm also concerned about the right tone. Our project is called achromatic painting. That means that we are working on establishing kind of grisaille. That means just by using black and white, we create a tonal painting. And since in many art box, the black and white colors are considered no really colors. Therefore, we call this painting achromatic. In case when you would decide, and some of you may, to use uh, another color, like for example, raw amber would be fantastic or burnt amber for it, and then just addition of black and white, then this kind of painting we would call monochromatic painting, since one color would be used. So as you can see, I'm applying the paint very fast. If you find out that it's easier for certain parts to work for you from the sides, uh, on the sides, just simply move the canvas, okay? And I will be now working, or maybe not this second. Okay, it's easier for me. So as you can see, how I move my brush. Very steady hand. This arm and this hand help me to keep the other arm and hand steady. By the line, so that I'm covering completely. And then I can move the paint. Now we are ready to work on the stand. And the stand has to be lighter. And now, as you can see, the line will disappear. Okay. Now I don't want to lose my shadows, so I can right away indicate them as well, since they are the part of my composition. I use paper towel very often to clean up my brush because solvent or water can cause that 
paint that you will later pick up will be too diluted. And then also is the way how the shadows behave. Shadows have to get softer on the edges and lighter going from the object they have projected. So I also have to take it in account. So let's right now look at this painting. You have more information. I'm softening the edges. As you can see, I can always revisit them. Just making sure that they are not too sharp because they are not objects they are shadows now i have to go back to my backdrop because i really think that we have to make it darker now i will also use a little bit more of lighter tone especially on the ground and I'll play it a little bit heavier. No medium in it because I have already plenty of it. Yeah, I can see that the bubble is really dark. Do I see some transparent effect? There will be some distortion here coming through. But right now notice how is the paint applied. It's not pure black. That is what I do with my finger. I'm helping myself to have a steady hand. If you want to switch the canvas on one side or another, you certainly can do it. So if you find that it will be easier for you to work with this, you certainly can. Now the brush that you can use, flat or filbert shape, this is filbert, flat would be just simply flat on the top, like a square or rectangular shape. I can see that this arch part, because the light comes from the upper corner, so the archy part, I call it archy part, arch part of our bottle, following one ellipse and the second ellipse, yeah, they have to become a little bit lighter. And even coming through the body of the bottle, I still will see some of a variety of tones. Now this side certainly will be darker. Go there. A little bit darker here. The edge is always darker. And then this part. Whenever you notice that you cross the lines, go back and fix the problem because often we forget while working on the project. Then somehow this accumulation of those small bubbles, I call them, and at once the shape is not correct. And we, we have problem to understand what has happened. Well, it happened that we didn't fix the problems right away. So now what I will do, I will go probably to this object and I think they are quite similar in terms of that seems to be this part, it's darker of the lemon. So I will work on both of them at the same time, believe me or not. Because I have to right away see what's going on. So if this will be the tone, the darker tone here on my lemon, notice light hits the lemon and since that's an oval shape, I have to mark where is the surface of the lemon that it's not touched by the rays of light. This is the part here that it's not lit in, and then the rays of light touch the surrounding, marking this cast shadow. Okay, so let's see, and that's what you learn in drawing fundamentals. If you didn't take it, 
just simply look at the handouts that I attached for you in our class the module one and refer to them because they will explain to you the distribution of light and shadows so as you can see this section definitely has to be darker and i can do it by once i have the layer of paint one then i can bring the other paint here right away into it without using medium anymore will be definitely darker underneath. You can see that this shadow is a little bit rounded because through the couple of points under where the lemon touches, I call it touches the ground. So it's a very strong cast shadow underneath and then the shadow becomes lighter. But this shadow will be crucial for us here. Underneath, very dark, as dark as the bottle. Some of the parts on the bottle will be also the shape here coming. And then we can work with the rest. Okay. Up. Okay. Still, this side seems to be a little bit. Let's see. Can I have it so light or not? It should be okay. Now this side definitely still needs to be lighter. Uh, we can another trick is by using a little bit more of paint and with the texture we also show what is in front, what is in the back. These are small tricks used by the painters. And it will be much easier for me to work. So right now I'm still using this big brush. To cover the line. Or the rim of my object. And even for our lemon, believe me or not, we still can go with a couple darker spots here and there. And when we don't like them, we can take them off. But you see, giving a little bit more of the shape. The same here, I think we can still be. So just here. See, I'm still working, I'm still adding until I will be satisfied. There's never such things like a finished painting. You can always add, you can always take away certain things. You have to decide when it's enough. So you have to find out this, this golden point of when you say, okay, I said enough. Or maybe Still, I'm darkening some of those cast shadows and then um, I'm moving them further by using more of them by making them softer and lighter. Okay, the most important is I have to soften the edge. So we're almost done. We have to now work ah, just the shadows here. This particular shadow has to get lighter. And I'm still looking at this part. 
Okay, what to do? It just has to be a little bit more. I think we're fine. Yeah, like this. Bring up. Bring those lighter parts in the pack. There, where the background touches the stand. Yeah, to more emphasize the contrast. Softening the edges. Still, I'm looking for it. This is not going the way. Oh, a little bit higher. See, so bringing it down. Right. Like this. Bringing this section. We have to get it lighter. Then we can come. Like I said, just finishing touches. And there with more paint, the same, we have those slides. Uh, well, it seems to me that there has to come later on another layer to cover completely the sketch marks, because some of them are pretty strong. And with the way how we apply now paint, I don't think that will, those lines, some of those lines will be, especially those next to the lemon. Then where you created the box before will disappear. So as you can see, this is yeah, just the last ones here. A little bit of it there. We will look at the bag and still. Then we will be able to say it's done. Our first assignment, our first exercise. I think we are done with our painting. So just continue working the same way how I've done it. Pick up three objects. One of them has to be the symmetrical prominent object that will transfer or become your reference object. And then two objects from which at least one has to be organic one. Set up the composition and follow steps that I just completed here. Have a good day and see you next time. Bye!